Zhongli, the god of contracts, the lord of Geo, the warrior god, the prime of the Adepti, Rex Lapis, lord of the unmoving rock, and the god of history and wealth. Those are but a few of the many, many monikers that Morax, the Geo Archon, goes by. And Morax is an interesting case study, to say the least. You see, this character is bad, but he's also overpowered. And make no mistake, I'm not simply making an oxymoron in my previous sentence. No, I really mean what I say. Now, you youngsters might not remember this, but back in my days of old, when Zhang Li was first released, he was, well, he, he was terrible. In fact, the global outrage from Zhongli's design was so widespread that he became the only character in the history of Genshin Impact to receive a direct balance update to buff him. And I'm not talking about elemental reaction system changes, new artifacts, or bug fixes, no. A straight up buff from Hoyoverse. All things considered, Morax is actually quite a decent character. That being said, the core issues of Morax were never solved. And as ironic as it sounds, time has not been kind to him. So let us delve and discuss one of the most polarizing units to ever be released in Genshin. Zhongli, an overpowered character that sucks. There is so much more to talk about when it comes to Morax, it is insane. And I'm not just talking about the fact that he's above 6,000 years old, which means there is so much lore surrounding him, no. From dragons to the moon sisters and the old world, this guy is connected to it all. And aside from Gnosticism, I know that Morax is primarily inspired by the Jade Emperor, but the more you dig into his character, you realize this character's inspiration stretch all the way from ancient Chinese philosophy to Christian theology into freaking Greek mythology. There is so much to talk about when it comes to Morax. But this video is about gameplay not lore and cultural inspirations. I'm going to stop myself now, maybe I'll expand on this topic in a separate video. Now, let's discuss his gameplay. And after I spent all this time hyping up this dude... Bro, this guy sucks. Let us backpedal a little bit. So, Morax, the god of contracts, commerce, stone, history, and wealth. One of the seven victors of the Archon War, the warrior god, the golden god that defeated, subdued, and killed more dragons, gods, and monsters than any other deity we know of so far. I wonder how a character like that plays in game. Hoyoverse! What the fuck? Okay. So. Realistically speaking, Zhongli is not actually a bad character. He is nowhere near the same level of garbage that Amber and Shinyan are in. On the contrary, he's actually pretty good. In fact, when it comes to accomplishing what he's designed to do, which is being a shielder, Zhongli is not only good at what he does, he's borderline overpowered. Morax has by far the best shield in the entire game, not only in terms of shield durability, but also in its utility. Having a 20% universal resistance shred means that as long as you have Morax's shield active, you'll be doing more damage. That being said, another benefit to Zhongli's shield outside of having Universal Shred is that, given enough HP, it allows you to do whatever you are trying to do without having to dodge enemy attacks, and by extension, it indirectly increases your effective stamina as you rarely have to dodge when his shield is active. Furthermore, his elemental burst can petrify most enemies in a large area, and crowd control is almost never bad. All the aforementioned benefits make Zhongli an extremely flexible unit that can be slotted into virtually any team. Now, I have said before that Geo as an element is a terrible design, and many Geo characters in Genshin are held back severely by their element. And while the former statement is still true to some extent with Zhongli, the universal benefits that his kit provides allow him to circumvent the drawbacks of Geo and transcend his element. But I will come back and expand on this and address this point later in the video, because there is more to it. Alright, I'm going to take a moment to address this point before we proceed. This is my Zhongli. Here, here are his stats, crit trade, crit damage, and he's also triple crept. Now, Zhongli lover 64 and Zhongli come dumpster 98. You know who you are, and I know you're watching. Look. 
I don't care if this is your favorite character, I don't care if this is your comfort character, or whatever cringe term you want to use. I'm going to spend the rest of this video explaining why this is one of the most garbage designs ever made in Genshin. So, save yourself time, save me time. Delete the 29 paragraph essay you are typing in the comments right now. Leave your dislike and get the hell out. Go watch an MMD of Zhongli dancing with Yule and Tartalia or whatever shit you like. Now that we got this out of the way to everyone who is actually interested in the video, let's get into it. Okay, in the spirit of fairness, we need to dissect Zhang Li's kit piece by piece to understand why it is fundamentally flawed. When it comes to his animations and normal attacks, actually these are fine. Yeah, Zhang Li's and normal attacks are ironically some of the most fluid and well-designed normal attacks in the game. And the rest of his animations are pretty good as well. And well, I know some people complain about his burst having too long of an animation. You see, burst animation is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it can be DPS loss, but on the other hand, burst animations can be extremely useful as an iframe mechanic. Not that Zhang Li is a character that needs immunity frames, but we'll get to that later. And because burst animation on all characters can be both useful and useless depending on the situation, I do not consider it to be a real downside in a character analysis. However, here are where all the problems start. And boy oh boy, there are many of them. First things first, remember earlier in the video when I said Morax's shield is so durable that it invalidates enemy damage? Yes, that's actually a problem. Because no matter how you look at it, Zhongli's shield is so tanky that it turns the vast majority of enemies into a joke. And this is so ironic because despite the fact that Zhongli makes the game significantly easier to play, he provides virtually no damage. Unless you specifically build him for damage and most of the time teams built around him are not as good as any other conventional 3-man option where Zhongli can be slapped as a filler. And if you still don't see why the combination of an unbreakable shield with minimal team buffs and personal damage is a problem, let me expand on it further. Having a tanky shield is not the issue. Shields are a mechanic that has existed across video games since time immemorial. And Zhongli's shield is a mechanic that is perfectly fine. The problem becomes the fact that Zhongli has the tankiest shield in the game while belonging to the worst element in the game, Geo. An element that virtually has no useful interaction with any other element in Genshin. Now, remember when I said that you can slap Zhongli with any good three-man core and the team will clear? Exactly. With Zhongli, you can leverage a well-established team composition by incorporating him into it, effectively removing two crucial mechanics in the game, namely enemy damage and stamina management. And that's all he does. Zhongli's sole purpose in the game is to make the gameplay of the game easier. The key criterion for success lies in completing an abyss floor within three minutes where any time saved beyond the 7 minute mark holds no substantial relevance. And because clear speed beyond 3 minutes does not matter, it does not matter if Fischl is better than Zhongli. It does not matter if Yaimiko is better than Zhongli. It does not matter if Kokomi is better than Zhongli. All you need are 3 good characters that can already clear content, you just add John Lee to that team and all he's going to do is make the exact same process more brain dead. No reactions, nothing. That's all he does. Some people say that Nilo is an artifact set and that is false. At least Nilo belongs to an element that does something in the game. Zhang Li is the real artifact set, and his 2 piece set effect is a 20% universal rest thread, while his 4 piece set effect is you get to ignore anything enemy is doing while smashing your keyboard until you win. But make no mistake, what I just covered is the mild part. We are about to delve into the real garbage now. You see, Zhang Li's buffs were overhyped when they first came in patch 1.3. That being said, despite the massive overhype, one thing remained true for the vast majority of people. The Geo Archon trivialized the game. For many people, the opportunity to get a character where you can press a single button and then proceed to turn off your brain and fight enemies was far too convenient and appealing. And for months on end, Zhang Li remained one of the most consistently used characters in Genshin Impact. But months later, Hoyoverse began to recognize that a large chunk of the player base became far too over-reliant on him. 
And in a gacha game, if a single character becomes far too dominant and overused, well, that's a problem now since it disincentivizes players from pulling for new units, especially new defensive units. And thus, however, started to roll out new enemies which are designed specifically to counter Zhongli. First, it was La Signora who applied damage over time to her characters through shields. And then there were the Rift Hounds who can apply corrosion damage through shields. Every single Black Serpent Knight who all buff one another when the active character has a shield effect. The Raiden Shogun Puppet, which can one-shot the active character through a shield. Pyro Abyss Lectors, who can apply burning debuff on the entire party regardless of whether they are shielded or off-field. These were all enemies designed as a direct counter to Zhongli. And going back to my point about Zhongli's element being useless, yes, Geo is an absolute joke of an element as it stands right now. It has no synergy with any other element in the game, which means that the only good Geo teams are ones where you have Goro paired with either Ito or Noel. And the lack of any relevant elemental reaction certainly does not help Zhongli's case. It only accentuates the issues I highlighted previously because this solidifies my point about him being nothing more than a shield bot. What makes this whole situation even funnier is that the only reaction which Zhongli can proc, crystallize, is a reaction that gives you a weak mini shield on a character that already has the strongest shield in the game built into his kit. And on top of all of that, shields in Genshin do not stack, which means the only thing that Zhongli does when he procs crystallize is remove an elemental aura that could be potentially used by another character to activate an actually useful reaction. And don't get me even started on Zhongli's synergy with Construct Resonance. Geo Constructs are one of the worst design mechanics in Genshin Impact because they do not work half the time since bosses destroy them instantly when they walk in their vicinity. And when they do work, they are clunky as hell. Like, dude, just look at this. Are you kidding me? Oh, and since we are on the topic of Geo Constructs, Zhongli's pillars, well, it's a terrible ability that has extremely small area of effect while simultaneously generating one particle at an RNG rate, making it not only inconsistent at generating energy, but also it is extremely bad at activating the four-piece effect of Tenacity of the Millilith, as ironic as it sounds. Ah, yes. Also, there is the Vortex Vanquisher, Zhongli's supposed best in slot weapon, which is not only completely useless for shield bot Zhongli since the passive only applies to him, but it is also outperformed by several other 4-star and 5-star weapons if you decide to run Zhongli as an on-field driver. It is sad because this is one of the coolest looking weapons in the game, but it is a complete meme. To be honest, Vortex Vanquisher needs a full rework. And going back to my point about Morax being a decent option in every team thanks to his shield, yeah, he's a decent option thanks to his shield, but he is also objectively inferior to both Toma and Kirara in almost every situation, unless Pyro and Dendro is inherently bad to use, which is not really the fault of Toma and Kirara. While both Toma and Kirara possess weaker shields, they make up for that by having actual elements that contribute to the overall themes that they are being used in. Now, I do not want to go into all of the different ways in which Toma and Kirara are better than Zhongli because the topic is long and it deserves its own video. To wrap things off, Zhongli's gameplay in my opinion is extremely underwhelming. Like yeah, sure, his animations are smooth, but most of the time you do not even get to see them because all you do is hold his E and then swap off. Looking at it now, with the flaws of his element and the fact that he needed a buff post-release, it is easy to see that Zhongli's problems stem from a time where Hoiver severely overestimated defensive utility. Combine that with the complete irrelevance of his signature weapon, the Vortex Vanquisher, and you get a character with an unclear sense of identity. With some of his kit being designed around supportive utility, while carrying other aspects of an on-field driver or a physical DPS, but realizing neither to their true extent. It is sad that one of the most ancient and powerful beings in Tevat ended up with such an underwhelmingly rudimentary kit. And this makes me wonder, what if Zhongli and Jiyu in general were designed today? Just how different would his gameplay have been? Overall, Morax is a decent character, he's not that bad. He's extremely flexible, which makes him pretty good actually, and he does fulfill his role as a shielder. It's just that he's not really viable outside of Mono Geo, and he has an uninteresting gameplay. Moral of the story, 
I'll play Zhongli as an on-field driver from now on. It feels much more rewarding to actually use his cool animations on field rather than pressing a single button and never looking at him again. Morax is the character that made me realize how good Genshin's lore really is. Learning about his feats across history and the fact that he lived when the Moon Sisters were still around was amazing. Moving into the Genshin anime, I am sure that there will be much, much more to learn about this dragon. And considering that we barely know anything about more than half of his life, one could only wonder how many secrets Morax hides. He is definitely the most intriguing of the Archons due to his raw age and historical feats. That being said, that is all I have to say for now. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful in some way. Take care.